Hello and welcome to another lecture of the Law of the Sea. I am Muhammad Ahmedul Islam, lecturer, Department of Law, World University of Bangladesh, and today we are going to talk about baseline and contiguous zone. Introduction: Maritime boundary is a manifestation of state sovereignty. Boundaries have an important role in determining the limits of sovereignty, the utilization of natural resources, and maintain security and integrity of territory. Maritime boundary is one of the country sensitive issues that may trigger disputes between countries. To reduce the risk of a dispute, then the international community has long been trying to seek the procedure of determining the maritime boundary between the coastal states. Baseline. A baseline as defined by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea is a line along the coast from which the seaward limits of a state's territorial sea and certain other maritime zones of jurisdiction are measured, such as a state's exclusive economic zone. Normally, a sea baseline follows the low water line of a coastal state. When the coast is deeply indented, has fringing islands or is highly unstable, straight baselines may be used. So in this picture one, we are seeing how baseline can be measured. So in the landmass area, we are seeing that there are uh, a big uh, land area and there is also a few fringe islands so where there are fringe islands we are saying that the baseline is counted from the outer part of those islands as well UN clause 1982 recognizes the eight zones that apply at sea namely internal waters in article 8 archipelagic waters in article 49 territorial sea in article 2 to 32 contiguous zone in article 33 exclusive economic zone in article 55 to 75 continental shelf in article 76 to 85 high seas in article 86 to 120 and international seabed area types of baseline UN Clause 1982 clearly divide the maritime boundaries in the coastal states. The countries can implement a different authority over each of the existing regime. The baseline is not only represent a territorial limit, but also the shape of the coast because that depends on the geographic form of the beach. Considering the diversity and complexity of each geographical state, the convention then make some types of baseline, normal baseline, straight baseline, archipelagic baseline, straight line, and the closing line. So now we are going to talk about these uh, different types of baselines. Normal baseline. Article 5 of UN clause which gives guidance to the depiction of the normal baseline as, except where otherwise provided in this convention, the normal baseline for measuring the breadth of the territorial sea is a low water line along the coast as marked on the large scale charts officially recognized by the coastal state. So normal baseline is usually used in general sense and which is measured from the low tide line of the, uh, of the land area. Straight baseline. The specific geographical circumstances under which a state may employ straight baseline are Described in Article 7, Clause 1, UN Clause 1982. In localities where the coastline is deeply indented and cut into, or if there is a fringe of islands along the coast in its immediate vicinity, the method of straight baselines joining appropriate points may be employed in drawing the baseline from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. In Article 7, Clause 3, the straight baselines must be sufficiently closely linked to the land domain to be subject to the regime of internal waters. So here we are seeing a picture of straight baseline. So now we are going to archipelagic baseline. Article 47 gives guidance to the depiction of archipelagic baseline. By definition, an archipelagic state is a state constituted wholly by one or more archipelagos and may include other islands, which has been provided in, in Article 46. This article defines an archipelago 
as a group of islands including parts of islands, interconnecting waters and other natural features which are so closely interrelated that such islands, waters and other natural features form an intrinsic geographical, economic and political entity or which historically have been regarded as such. So in this picture, picture number three, we are seeing an archipelagic base there. So from point A to point B to point C, so all of these points are measured from the one end of one island to the another end of another island. So from one end to another end of all the islands under the control of a country can be used to create an archipelagic baseline. Contiguous zone. The contiguous zone is an area of sea contiguous to and extending seaward of the territorial sea in which the coastal state may exercise the control necessary to prevent and punish infringement of its customs, fiscal, immigration or sanitary laws and regulations within its territory or territorial sea. This would typically be 12 nautical miles or 22 kilometers or 14 miles in uh, land measures wide, but could be more if a state has chosen to claim a territorial sea of less than 12 nautical miles or less if it would otherwise overlap another state's contiguous zone. However, unlike the territorial sea, there is no standard rule for resolving such conflicts and the states in question must negotiate their own compromise. The United States invoked a contiguous zone out of 24 nautical mile from the baseline on 29 September 1999. So in this picture, picture number 4, we are seeing the contiguous zone which starts from the baseline and ends in the 24 nautical mile limit of the sea. Okay. So, this is the contiguous zone. So, this is our lecture. We are uh, talking about the baseline and we are talking about the contiguous zone. So, here we are seeing that the baseline can be measured from the land and from the island points. And there are a few types of baselines like a straight baseline and also And also there are archipelagic baselines and then we are seeing contiguous zones and contiguous zone is actually the 24 nautical mile zone which includes territorial sea in it as well. So I hope you have understood the lecture content and if you face any difficulty in understanding the lecture please contact me uh, through the comment section and I will answer you accordingly. So thank you so much for participating in today's class and I hope to see you all in the next class.